Ladies and gentlemen, today we're here to talk about hay and hay sampling and how it's important to you and your horse operation. The only true measure of the quality of a hay that you either grow on your own farm or purchase is to have it tested chemically in the lab. And we're going to show you today the proper way to do that. This is so important when managing horse farms, being a horse farm owner and so forth because one of the biggest expenses we have in the maintenance of a horse is what we feed that horse. And many horses, whether they're pleasure horses on your own farm or horses at the racetrack or performing horses at the circus or at a show, daily feeding of hay is very important for the health of that animal. So today we're going to talk about how to do the right testing and show you a little bit of the tools and the methods of doing that. You'll see here with me today I've got several different types of probes. You can uh, purchase them online or at most any ag feed store. We have the Yankton Hay Probe, we have the Colorado State, we have the Penn State, and then we have the HMS. Any of these probes will do a good job when sampling hay. It's really a matter of personal preference. So we're going to demonstrate the Colorado State Probe today, but any of these probes will do a good job in testing your hay. Before we go any further, I do want to make mention of the fact that there's an excellent website available that you can go to. It's foragetesting.org. That's all one word, foragetesting.org. And if you go there, you can find a list of these cores and samplers, and they'll also show you where to purchase them. So a terrifically good website. And in case you, don't, in case you miss something in our demonstration today, it will also show you and tell you, again, the proper way to do that. But we're going to demonstrate that for you today. Now getting started, I'll use a probe here to do a little demonstration. We need to define what a lot of hay is. And a lot of hay on your farm, if you're making your own hay, is hay that is produced from the same field, the same cutting, baled on the same day. That can, constitutes a lot of hay. Now if you're getting a load of hay in our tractor trailer, then that obviously would be considered a lot of hay. Or even if it's round bales, whether it's 15 or 20, that would be considered a particular lot of hay. We want to sample that randomly as, after it comes into the farm or after we've made that hay. The closer to feeding time that we can sample that hay, the better it is. The better analysis we're going to get in doing our testing and so forth. We want to get a cross section of this, about half of this bale right here. If we just take one flake, that's just a very small sampling of that particular bale. So we want to get as much, as indiscriminate a sample as we can. Now, how many samples do we take? For each individual sample, we, we would like to see 20 cores from any one of these probes like this to be registered as one sample when we send it to the laboratory. You can see we've got a small stack of hay here today. We've got six bales. And to get a representative sample of this, if we did three, that would probably be very good. If you have a tractor trailer load of hay that comes to your farm and it has 500 bales on there, again, a minimum of 20 samples we want taken from that particular load of hay. If you grow your own hay on your own farm and you have either small square bales or round bales, again, it is important to get a random sample from that particular lot of hay that we're going to analyze. Again, when it gets to the farm after you get it unloaded, I would go around that stack of hay as you've got it stacked in the barn and again, take one off the second row, the third row, go five feet, take another sample, and you know, so forth. So you want a random sample. Don't just take three bales in a block or something like that. Or if they're round bales, just don't take the first three or four bales or even the first 20. Get a random sampling of that hay. Now we're going to go ahead and proceed and actually take a sample of hay or a core of hay, if you will. Again, as I told you earlier, we're going to use this Colorado State hay probe or Colorado hay probe. No matter which hay probe you use, you always want to make sure that the cutting tip is sharp on it. And after you take a number of samples over a period of time, these tips will get dull. So depending upon the probe you use, always remember you like to have one that's replaceable or is able to be sharpened because after time they will dull. Now these particular probes you can either use with a brace and bit, you can use with a drill with an electric cord, or today we've actually got a cordless drill that we're going to use and these are handy when sampling quite a bit of hay. When we go into this particular bale 
we want to make sure that we go right into the butt end of the bale and we want to get as near to the center as possible. And the reason we do that is because when this hay is being baled and that plunger keeps coming back pushing this hay into the bale chamber, especially on legume type hay alfalfa, as it does that, leaves tend to fall toward the bottom. Okay, so if you sampled on the very bottom, you probably get a higher analysis than if you sampled off the very top. So to get, again, that representative sample that we want, we want to go right into the middle of that bale. Now, as we pull this out, you'll know that this is very warm, and depending upon the, the density of this bale, the warmer this thing will be. What we want to now do is take a, something like this to push this hay back out of the tube, the sampling tube, into the collection tube. So after we get the hay pushed out of this tube into the collection tube, we're ready to go on to our next sample. Again, one of the 20 that we're going to put in this tube to make our total collection for this particular sample of hay. Again, on a sack of hay like that, we may again want to come down here and do it right here in the middle of this bale, just like this. And come out, sometimes they'll slow down on you, but the result's the same. You've got a tube full of hay. Again, just push that down in there, and you're ready to go to the next sample. Once we get our collection tube full of hay, we simply press in this button and we should have a canister full of hay ready to be sampled. Again, we want to take that, put it in a plastic bag like this. And of course this bag will be fuller when you get all 20 samples in there. But as you can see, we've got a nice representative sample of hay there. Again, we've got stem, we've got leaf material. We've got green leaf material, we've got brown leaf material. So again, we're wanting to show that we get the very representative sample as we go through that bale, okay? Now, we've got 20 of these in here. What do we do with this after we get all 20 in the bag? The very worst thing we can do is throw them up in the dash of the truck. Today, we've actually brought a cooler with us to put these samples in. We've actually got some ice in it today. This is not necessarily at all times, but especially in the hot summer months, it's good to keep these samples cool. Uh, this hay is cured out, those plants should not be respiring, but there may be a little moisture in it, and if you throw it up on the dash of the truck, that sun beats down on it, and there is some moisture in there, it can affect your sample. So the main thing is just keep them cool and dry. Try to get them to the laboratory, to your county agent, to your local feed store, whoever's going to get it to the lab for you, try to get it to them as soon as possible. Again, I mentioned at the beginning the foragetesting.org, tremendous website to go to if you have any questions about the handling of the samples or the samples themselves. If we don't test our hay and we're just throwing a flake or two of hay out to a particular animal or group of animals, we're simply guessing at what they're getting nutrient-wise, mineral-wise, and so forth. So, taking a good sample, getting it to a certified laboratory, and then taking those results, consulting a nutritionist, consulting a veterinarian, consulting your feed store, consulting your county agent, any person like that that can help you balance a ration, formulate an economic ration to feed those animals appropriately in the least cost fashion will pay big dividends in the long run.